Welcome to Mammals of Ontario Part A. In this module we'll be reviewing mammals and how to observe mammals as picked up and follow up from previously taught in the course and going through the first part of our mammal species of Ontario that we're covering in this course. When we're observing mammals, one of the things to keep in mind are the characteristics to compare across species. So size is one thing. So for example, a cougar is very significantly larger than a fox, right? So those are things to keep in mind. Relative size, proportion of body parts, so how long the tail is versus, you know, the hind feet, etc. Head characteristics, feet and claws, color, of course, being important, unique markings, behavior, dentition. Again, these are all important ideas to keep in mind or contrast between species that will have identifiers to help you narrow down it to the species of identification. So when we're looking at the relative size of body parts, we're really looking for three things. We're looking for the length of the legs compared to the body. So in our weasel family, we see very short legs and a very long body. We look at the length of the ears compared to the body because that will help us to differentiate between species. We also look at the length of the tail compared to the body. So again, in our weasel family, tail length is critical when we're looking at identifying between different species. One of the things we also look for is mammal signs and tracking, etc. But also understanding the structure of the feet and claws is also important. Does it have a hoof or does it have a claw? That's a pretty good identifier right there. The number of registrant toes, how many toes actually register with the ground. Are there claw marks present or not? Again, those are unique things that are now allow us to identify down to a species level. Color is also important and there are different morphs. For example, these are all red foxes, but one of them is the red, right? One of them is the black, and then one of them is the cross. So again, there are different color patterns between species, but also within species, which allows us to uh, compare and identify what exactly the animal is that we're seeing. Our first order of study will be artiodactyla, which are hoofed animals or even toed ungulates. These are characterized by having two or four, usually, hoof toes on each. This order includes species like elk, white-tailed deer, moose, caribou. Um, they have some other unique characteristics like rasping cheek teeth, no upper incisors, a very complex stomach, and deciduous antlers in most cases. So again, these are all uh, characteristics that we use for this particular family within this order, Cervididae. So the elk, or wapiti, is one of the largest species of deer in the world. The fur is generally brown in summer and gray in winter. The head, neck, and legs are much darker brown, as you can see here present. Also around the neck of males is significantly darker. Males have antlers, females do not. White-tailed deer, by far one of the more common ungulates that we'll see in southern and central Ontario. Uh, they are tan or reddish-brown in the summer, grayish-brown in winter. Um, the males will grow antlers, the females will not. Fawns are spotted, as we likely know from Disney, with brown tails and a white underside. And of course they're called white-tailed deer because the tail, which will go up in the presence of danger or warning, is white, signaling to other deer as well to flee. Moose, which is the largest member of the deal family, is very large and slender, long, slim legs and cloven hooves that are more than 18 centimeters long. Very humped appearance with, from its deep and very muscular shoulders, uh, hindquarters and a very stubby tail. The moose's head is extremely heavy with a long, overhanging, flexible upper lip. And the moose uh, has something called a bell, which is a piece of fur that dangles from their throats which you can see here very clearly in the image. The caribou, these are uh, light 
brown in winter and slightly darker in the summer. Um, they have very short and stocky bodies that conserve heat. Um, and they're very good at, of course, um, being able to survive in the snow. Their antlers are unique in the sense that both male and female carry antlers, which is not um, by far common or shared amongst their family. Their antlers are also shaped like a shovel, of course, for shoveling out snow to access the vegetation that is beneath. Um, the antlers of the female are smaller than those of the male, but they are carried for a longer period of time as the males will shed those more frequently. Our next order is carnivora, and carnivora by far are the most diverse in size, particularly of any mammalian order, ranging from anything from weasels to polar bears. They will generally eat meat. Um, some, for example, depend solely on meat, but others are more omnivorous, like bears and raccoons. They all have teeth, claws, binocular vision, adapting for capting or capturing prey. Many will hunt in packs or being social animals to give them an advantage over larger bodied prey. Our first family is the Felidae, so our cats. These are bobcats, cougars, and lynx. They are generally solitary hunters. They walk on their toes and they have retractile claws um, with five toes in the front and four in the back. These uh, species are all, as you can see, very different from each other. The two most likely to be confused are the bobcat and the lynx, although even from these images putting them together, there is a size difference between the two, and of course their anatomy and their structure is also quite different. The cougar, or mountain lion, is a very muscular body, of course, that varies from tawny red to dark brown. They are found uh, throughout the Americas, ranging from South America to North America. They are known for their very large front paws and also very, very long tail, which is used for balance. They are the largest cat in Canada. The bobcat is named for its very short bob tail, as you can see here. Uh, it's similar in appearance to their cousin the link, but the tip of the tail is black on the top only, not on the bottom, so that's a unique feature. The fur varies in color from shades of brown or black. Notice it has spotting, at, which was a pattern not present in the lynx as well. The tufts on the, the ears are not present on this species, that's present on the lynx. So there are a number of features to use when identifying between the two. Within the skunk family, of course, one of the ones we're going to talk about is the striped skunk, which is relatively common and, and certainly recognizable. The striped skunk, of course, is small, thick, sleek black fur. It runs in white stripes and two stripes starting at the back of the head, running parallel, diverging across the back and then down through the tail. It's got a very small uh, head as well. It, it has semi-webbed uh, toes, which are good for digging um, and ripping apart trees. And of course, most famously, it's got its musk glands, which produce its unique odor when startled. The next family is the Mastillidae, or the weasel family. There are a number of different species present in this family, so they all share some relatively common characteristics. Long bodies, very short legs, and also scent glands. So some of these species we'll talk about are the American Martin, the Fisher, the American Badger, the Ermine, the Lease Weasel, the Long-Tailed Weasel, the American Mink, the Wolverine, and the Northern River Otter. All are within the Stilidae family. The American Martin is, you can see here, has a slender body. It has relatively dark or pale yellow to brown fur. One of the unique identifying features about this one is that it's got a breast spot. So right underneath its chin, at the beginning of its chest, it's got an orange to creamy white breast spot, you can see here indicated by the red arrow. Males are larger than females, it's got very conspicuous ears, diamond-shaped eyes, it's only about half the size of the fisher, so these are some of the things to keep in mind when identifying this species. Also, look at the bushy tail as well. A fisher is nearly twice as large and about four times as heavy as a marten. 
can see its uh, its coat is much darker and blackish brown fur, and it's got a bushy tail as well. Fisher's have very short legs. It has a grizzled looking appearance. So notice the patterning here. It's got more shades of brown and gray mixed in. A very uh, ears that stand out. Very very large uh, claws and paws here, which you can see present. The short-tailed weasel, or ermine, uh, goes through color change in its pelage throughout the year. In the summer, it's uh, brown on its upper parts and creamy white below, um, but the feet are, are white all year round. However, in the winter, it becomes completely white, except for the black tip on its tail, which is one of those unique features. Notice the length of the tail relative to its body and its size. Those will be a key characteristic in identifying the short-tailed weasel from some of its other relatives. The least weasel is the smallest of our native weasels. In the summer, it's walnut brown above and white below. In winter, the entire animal is white, except for a few black hairs at the tip of its tail, which you can see here are not even visible in this case. So the short-tailed weasel has a very clearly defined black dot at the end of its tail. The least weasel does not. The tail is shorter than the short-tailed weasel. Mink is a very dark brown uh, or to black uh, fur coat. It has a very cylindrical bushy tail. It has anal musk glands, of course, and it's used for uh, in the coat industry as well. One of the key features about this one is that, yes, it's got a very dark uh, brown coat, but underneath its chin, it's got a white patch, a white spot right underneath its chin. That's one of its unique identifiers. The wolverine uh, is almost bear-like in appearance. It's got a small head with long legs and long fur. Its coat is very shiny, dark brown on the top, ranging to almost very light cinnamon on the bottom in a very characteristic pattern. It's got a brownish stripe down each side of the flank to the base of the tail, very large, wide paws, and a very uh, voracious appetite. The American Badger is a large, muscular, short-legged weasel. It's got a very grizzled appearance on its body, so its, its hair is mixtures of white and brown grizzled together. The forelimbs are slightly uh, reddish at the front. It's got a very short bottle brush tail. Its face is marked with unique striping patterns, a white stripe right down the middle, followed by black and white alternating patterns. The ears are very pronounced. Elongated three, central three claws in the forefoot are present for digging uh, in the soft sand banks. The northern river otter is our most aquatic of the weasel family. Very dark, brown, shiny upper parts that look black when wet. Paler below, slightly silvery or grizzled throat. Broad, flattened head, of course, prominent whiskers, uh, collapsed ears, of course, for greater uh, aerodynamics in the water, long, thick, furred tail, uh, all of which are important for swimming in the aquatic environments it lives in. Our next family has only one member, which is the raccoon. The raccoons are interesting because, of course, they're very common in urban and rural areas. They've got a grizzled gray appearance, a uh, tail which alternates between black and white stripes, a mask, of course, of black across the eyes, and, of course, they know that they, are, um, they get into serious trouble with garbage and other things as well. They are heel walkers with very long hind legs, are good at climbing, relatively slow at walking, um, but can be found throughout most of urban and rural Ontario. Our next family is the Ursidae, which are a bear families. These are heel walkers as well. They're waddlers in terms of their gait. There are black bears and polar bears in Ontario, which we're going to discuss and contrast. The black bear is the most common bear species uh, in North America. Uh, they can weigh between 40 and 180 kilograms uh, for the females, and the males can be substantially heavier than that. They walk characteristic shuffling with their uh, flat-footed uh, hind legs being slightly longer than their front legs. They are omnivorous. They will be opportunistic eaters, ranging in eating for everything from garbage to apples to honey. They are, of course, called a black bear because of the black coloration of their fur.
The other bear, of course, is the polar bear, which is white, given its environment and its polar setting. Its body is also designed to be uh, a swimmer, of course, for uh, hunting its prey, like seals, etc. Uh, it's the largest land carnivore in North America, okay? so it's very different in both its anatomy and its structure. It's got large, strong paws for hunting seals through holes in the ice, and the claws being sharp, straight, and non-retractable and brown in color, and you can see them as they're running. The Canidae family, they are the dog family, of which there are many different species, the coyote, the gray fox, the red fox, uh, the gray wolf, and the arctic fox, all of which share very common, or what we would consider dog-like features in terms of their anatomy and their behavior. The coyote is smaller than the wolf, leaner in appearance, gray, buffy, or reddish colors. Um, the tail is dark-tipped at the end. The underparts are light to whitish. It's got a bushy tail. Um, it runs with its tail tucked between its legs, which is, it is a feature when it's on the move, and it weighs between 10 to 22 kilograms. The arctic fox is our smallest wild canid. It's about the size of a domestic cat. Um, the coat is usually dark or gray in the summer, and it turns white in the winter season. Um, their main uh, prey, of course, being small rodents and, and bird eggs, of course, in the summer, etc. Um, of course, being its thick coat, um, the arctic fox is able to stay warm because it has very short legs, so it loses very little heat uh, in the cold winters. The red fox is a small dog-like mammal. Of course, there are, as we've seen earlier, different color morphs of this particular species. The long, bushy tail is lustrous, rusty red-orange. Um, it has a dark muzzle and black ears and paws. Uh, the tail tip, throat, and underparts are generally white. Um, the male is called a dog, and usually the slightly larger female is called a vixen. The gray fox is a little bit smaller usually. It's got a longer grizzled looking appearance and coat, reddish undersides as opposed to white. Um, the belly and the throat might be white, however. The tail is often black on top and a distinct black spot on either side of the muzzle. So if you look carefully in this image at the muzzle or the snout of the animal, you'll see that characteristic black spot. 